Good afternoon, everyone. I would first like to say a big thank you to Farming Smarter for this opportunity and for this opportunity for 4-H members to come out and get to present to you guys. We're all very excited today. My name is Brooklyn Nisnik, and I'm a fifth generation Nisnik, being raised on a 99-year-old family ranch where I've had the opportunity to work side by side with my family in its operations. This is my ninth year in two different clubs, the Borova Riders and South Slope 4-H Beef Club. Uh, my projects of interest are market steer, heifer, cow, calf, pear, and horse. I have held every executive position over the years, and my most recent accomplishment was being chosen to represent 4-H as an ambassador for the South Region. Along with this, I was also awarded a trip to California to the 4-H State Leadership Conference hosted at University of California Davis in Sacramento. Being an ambassador, I am responsible for representing our South Region, helping out from club to provincial level, promoting 4-H, and being a positive role model for our members. This past summer, I had the opportunity to attend the Provincial Sheep Show as an ambassador where I helped show marshal, ring steward, assist members with judging, as well as helped organize the show. I love everything that 4-H has to offer. Friendship, leadership, and responsibility, and the many opportunities available. This past fall, I spent three months in Spain on a school exchange. Skills I acquired through, 4H, through my 4-H years in 4-H were valuable, to, in gaining the confidence and networking skills to aid in this end Denver. Thank you. And I am going to announce our first speakers. Charles White is a 14-year-old and in grade nine at St. Francis School in Lethbridge. He enjoys school sports, especially basketball and life on the family ranch west of Claire's home. Charles is in his sixth year with the Claire's Home 4-H Beef Club and is serving as a treasurer this year. He enjoys everything about raising, training, and showing cattle, as well as all things 4-H. Lauren White is 13 years old and in grade seven at the St. Francis School in Lethbridge. She loves gymnastics, basketball, skiing, and showing her horses and cattle. Lauren, in her fifth year with the Claire's Home 4-H Beef Club and is enjoying her role as secretary this year. She appreciates all of the great friends and memories she's made through the 4-H so far and looks forward to five more awesome years. Charles and Lauren White, Beef Byproducts. Beef Byproducts, Charles and Lauren White. Thank you, Brooklyn. I have a question for you. When you think beef cattle, you probably think the end result is something juicy and tasty. But have you ever thought of the byproducts? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A product a byproduct is a secondary product that is manufactured when something else is produced. In the case of beef, there are dozens, maybe even hundreds of products that we use in our everyday life in addition to many cuts of tasty red meat. Today we're going to show you a wide variety of products from cattle, from the horns to the hooves and everything in between. Each year, I raise a steer for 4-H. Ideally, I want him to weigh about 1,400 pounds. We talk a lot in 4-H about having a finished steer and raising the best beef anywhere. But did you know from a big finished steer, only 500 pounds of the meat ends up in the freezer? So what happens to the rest of them? The first part of the cow's body I want to talk about are the fats and fatty acids. Fats and fatty acids are all throughout the cow's body. Tallow is a hard fatty substance that comes from beef fat. It is very beneficial in many ways. Tallow is used in many edible and non-edible products. Edible tallow products include margarine, shortening, and gelatin. Most of us don't think about beef when we're eating pie, jello, pudding, or just chewing gum. Even marshmallows have tallow in them. There are also many useful non-edible products that, we, that contain beef tallow, like dynamite. Or, or if you look in your bathroom or laundry room, many of the products contain this very important beef byproduct. Everything from hand creams, shaving cream and shampoo, to soaps and detergents and even lipstick. The outer coating of capsules 
used for most medicines for easy to, ta to swallow because tallow makes things slippery. It's also in many paper products, including money. Do you know that the newer Canadian dollar bills are very difficult to rip because of tallow? Are you starting to realize almost everything we get from a cow is used? We even use the intestines from sausage casings and instrument and tennis racket strings. It's, there are about 10 million cattle in Canada. Whether they are grass fed or grain fed, live indoors or out, they all have one thing in common. They all poop. Mm -hmm. Manure is a very useful byproduct from the beef animal. Most ranchers and feedlots will spread their manure as a natural fertilizer on their pastures or crops. There are five main categories of useful products we get from cow manure. Those are nutrients, organic matter, solids, fiber, and energy. Manure contains nitrogen and phosphorus, which help plants and other organisms grow. Com composts and fertilizers are key products we all use. Organic beef product manure improves soil quality and structure and its ability to absorb water. This results in better crop production. Manure is mostly water at first, but if you can separate the solids, it can be used for bedding. This is more common in the dairy industry. Manure fiber has been used to produce a number of specialty consumer products, like plant growth medium, seed starter pots, and even paper and building materials. Manure contains a lot of carbon, meaning it can be a great energy source. Biofuels from cow manure can save farmers a lot of money and are good for the environment compared to other energy sources. Now you're probably thinking what in the world can come from a cow's brain? Well, only a few things, but they still count. Anti-aging cream and medicines. Speaking of medicines, look at all the necessary life-saving products we get from cattle. From pancreas, we get insulin, one of the most important medicines in the world, as it treats diabetes and high blood sugar. Other, medicine, other medicines help heal burns and, and digest food. From the liver, we get the well-known blood thinner, heparin. Everything from anemia to asthma, to blood disorders, even plastic surgery needs, need products from cattle. The most well product from cattle is, of course, leather. Cowhide exists in everything from luggage to footwear, sporting equipment to saddles and other tack and more. Do you know that you can produce 18 pairs of shoes from just one animal? The hide itself is often used for rugs and other horn, home decors. The cow's hair can make paintbrushes. Hooves have also become an important resource as they contain a protein called keratin, which is now being used in fire extinguishers, especially at airports for runaway fires caused by tires. Jewelry, dishes, buns, and more are made from the cow's bones and hooves. It is hard to imagine what life would be like if it wasn't for beef cattle and all the delicious meat and byproducts they provide us. As 4-Hers, we get the most enjoyment from our animals before they are sold and processed. We have found that each and every animal is unique and it is a privilege to own and raise them. We get to enjoy the animals and also appreciate the paycheck, but sometimes it feels like the general public doesn't support or understand our industry. Today there are fake burgers in restaurants and less beef than ever on the Canadian Food Guide. Maybe if people realize the wide variety of products in their homes that come from beef, they would appreciate cows as much as we do. We appreciate the opportunity to speak here today. Thank you, Farming Smart Smarter. This is her seventh year in 4-H. She belongs to two 4-H clubs, the Arrowwood River Wranglers 4-H Horse Club and Champion 4-H Beef Club. In addition to 4-H, she plays volleyball, softball, and helps out on the farm. Beyond Meat, Anna Lundgren, Anna Lundgren, Beyond Meat. Whenever my family eats out, there is only one thing on the menu that I eat. 
a hamburger. We go to the keg. I order a burger. We go to a pizza place. I order a burger. We go to a Japanese restaurant and I scan the menu to see if they even sell a burger. I absolutely love hamburgers. Good afternoon, Madam Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone has made the vow at one time or another to eat healthier, and for most of us, this means eating more fruits and vegetables. The move towards increasing plant-based proteins in our diets is becoming very popular in North America. Food trends come and go, but what will this recommended increase of plant-based proteins in our diets mean for my favorite food, the hamburger? The increased use of plant-based proteins is backed by strong government support as shown in the 2019 version of the Canada Food Guide and the recent report by the Eat Lancet Commission. Both recommend reducing meat consumption and increasing the use of plant-based proteins in our diets. This trend has come around to one of my all-time favorite foods. Now, regular burgers are pretty great, but I am very skeptical of meatless ones. There are many meatless burger options available, but one of the most common is A&W's Beyond Meat Burger. According to Time.com, the average consumer trying the Beyond Burger are, quote, meat eaters looking for food alternatives that are better for their body and the planet, unquote. I read several reviews for A&W's Beyond Burger, and many said it was surprisingly good. After reading these reviews, I de decided to try a Beyond Burger for myself. It did taste similar to a regular burger, but was it because it had the same flavorful toppings and condiments? To determine whether a plant-based burger was actually healthier than a regular burger, I then compared A&W's Beyond Meat Burger with their teen burger using the nutritional information provided by A&W. The Beyond Meat Burger is an alternative meat patty and is served in a bun with A&W special seasoning, lettuce, tomato, pickles, red onion, ketchup, mustard, and mayo. A&W's Teen Burger has the same toppings plus bacon and cheese. Even with these high fat additional toppings, the Teen Burger has the same amount of calories, three less grams of fat, and three more grams of protein when compared to the Beyond Meat Burger. That's right, the Teen Burger has less fat than the Beyond Burger. While I was looking at the nutritional information, I also decided to check the ingredients of these two burgers. The Beyond Burger Patty has an ingredient list that is 37 ingredients long, while the comparable Teen Burger Patty has only one ingredient, beef. The processing required for this meatless option is also significantly more than grinding up beef. The 2019 Canada Food Guide is also recommending that we eat less processed foods. The current option of the Beyond Meat Burger with its higher fat content, lower protein, increased processing, and poor taste may be trendy and significantly better than its predecessors. However, there is still room for improvement and we will definitely be seeing more of these options in the future. I, for one, will be sticking with beef. Ellie Stoffer is a 17-year-old and a member of the Foothills 4-H Beef Club in Pincher Creek. She's been a member of this club for eight years, having a market steer and female beef projects and the occasional lamb. Besides 4-H, Ellie plays volleyball and rugby and loves to work at home on the ranch. Ellie is looking to pursue an education in agriculture, taking a Bachelor of Science in Agribusiness at the University of Saskatchewan next fall. Here is my fellow ambassador of the South Region. I was just 10 years old when I got to compete in my very first 4-H public speaking competition. 
And let's just say I loved it right from the beginning. This is probably because it combined my two favorite things as a 10 year old, talking loudly and getting to show off just a little bit. Ever since then, I have looked forward to every single public speaking competition and 4-H activity. And because of this, I have been given so many opportunities and I am extremely grateful for each and every one of them. By taking on roles like being a camp counselor at the 4-H camps, or how I've had the opportunity to be an ambassador for the Southern Region, this program has developed my leadership skills, while also directly involving me in agriculture through the cattle shows and judging competitions. It's through these events and activities that just this summer, I was able to go to the Northwest Territories with a group of other 4-H'ers to see what the ag industry looks like there. See, this is what I believe the beauty of the program is, because I have not only made some fantastic friends who I've shared many memories and laughs with, but also future business partners and people involved in an industry that I also plan on being a part of. I am now in my eighth and final year of 4-H, and I can see just how many skills and connections I've gained through the program, as well as how much I've grown since I was 10 years old. This is why what I had the chance to do this past November was such an amazing cap to my years in 4-H. Due to my success at the provincial level of public speaking, I was given the opportunity to compete on behalf of 4-H Alberta at the Canadian Young Speakers for Agriculture competition. This competition is held in Toronto at the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair. And it was an incredible experience as I not only got to tour one of the largest agricultural fairs in Canada, but I also got the chance to listen to speakers from all across the country, all coming from different agricultural backgrounds and all of them having new perspectives to share. I am very proud to say that I was able to bring home the champion title for the CYSA 2019. And it's only through all that 4-H has taught me that I even had the chance to compete at a national level competition like this one. And with that, I would now like to present to you today my CYSA speech, entitled, A New Face. What does the farmer look like? Is he still that old man in a straw hat with a pitchfork in his hand? Or is he now in a lab coat mixing chemicals together? As someone who has grown up in agriculture, this seems like almost a silly question to me. To me, the farmer looks like you, me, and just like everybody else. But to a startling amount of the urban population, the farmer is actually a mystery. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The Canadian Centre for Food Integrity did a survey in 2016, and the results were shocking. Only 30% of consumers believed that the Canadian food system was headed in the right direction. As many as 21% believed it was headed in the wrong direction, and half of Canadians replied that they were unsure. The article in the Country Guide that I found these statistics in went on to explain that the reasons consumers were so unsure were because of problems they had heard about on the news or online. Issues like the unhealthy amount of greenhouse gases supposedly produced by agriculture, the questionable safety of GMO products, and so on. But where were the producers to stand up for themselves and to inform our urban neighbours of the truths of Canadian agriculture? That's the thing. Most of us weren't there to do that. And now, in 2019, the gap between producers and consumers is clear. Going into the future, consumers need a direct line of contact with producers, and they need to be shown how our industry is making an effort to address their concerns. But how? I believe that the answer lies in the upcoming generation. This mixture of millennials and centennials are equipped to raise the standard for Canadian agriculture for consumers through the education they're receiving, the technology that they are developing as a result, and the way they'll influence how agriculture is portrayed to the world. There are over 34 post-secondary institutions in Canada providing an education in agriculture. Some of these schools offering as many as 18 specific agricultural programs. But why is this an advantage to the upcoming generation? Let's take a look at this example at the University of Saskatchewan. 
In 2018, the Canadian government made a $3.4 million investment into this school's projects that were concerning the reduction of greenhouse gases. These projects included looking at different pasture management techniques, along with developing a variety of technology to address this subject. This shows how the post-secondary education in Canada is a huge advantage to the youth in agriculture because of the innovative research and technology being developed at these schools, not only at the U of S. So clearly, we are developing technology and education that shows we're addressing consumer concerns. So how are we showing the public that we do? According to Global Stats Counter, Social media allows for the potential to connect with 70% of the population of North America. This is over 257 million people, producers and consumers alike, all connected by a small screen. This type of global scale contact is how future producers can and already are working towards showing consumers the ways of the industry while tackling common agricultural myths. Take this online trend for example. Every year on February 12th, a hashtag is repeatedly posted on various social media platforms entitled hashtag Canadian Ag Day. All across the country, people are posting agriculture related pictures and are showing pride for their roots. Just think, if we could continue to develop more online trends like this, along with get the help of influential figures to also promote the positive message of agriculture, it would begin to close that communication gap that exists and instead create a direct source of information for consumers. As a 4-H ambassador for Alberta, I have had the opportunity to promote and speak about agriculture to producers and consumers. I want to share my passion for the industry, whether it's by explaining different farming practices to my urban classmates or by coming to conferences like this one. My goal as a future producer is to communicate directly with the public. So far, what I've come to find is that consumers are willing to hear what producers have to say. Producers simply need to be willing to show them what Canadian agriculture looks like today. According to the truthaboutag.com, most consumers are four generations removed from the farm and therefore don't necessarily know the education producers are receiving or how producers are trying to address their concerns. It's the secret weapon of social media that gives the upcoming generation the center stage, where consumers can ask questions and learn directly from producers. This can come in many different forms, from a simple Instagram account to even an egg blog or website that you promote using your Instagram account. The possibilities for this technology really are endless. So what does the farmer look like? Is he still that old pitchfork man? Or is he now well educated by the programs available in Canada, motivated to take on the challenge of addressing consumer concerns, and also willing to reach out directly to consumers through social media? As long as we embrace these new methods and technologies, those of us in the upcoming generation will be the new face of Canadian agriculture and are bringing so many more advantages to the table.